and this is a little better close up of these uh, these bays. Actually, now you can see there's all four of them there. That they that's where they take the water in, one for each unit. Uh, shows that there they had some vehicles already on the 12th of March there to, to you know they had access to it they were able to to start their their work to to make sure they had everything in place uh, this is just a different perspective from yesterday that shows again and they've got some vehicles here that are that are working you know that you can see there they've they've got that system where they've got people there and, and, and able to control that so we haven't had any concerns with this plant and I just wanted to for several days and and we just wanted to, to kind of let you know that that you know what we were seeing from the satellite images that that there didn't appear to be significant damage so that is all I have and um, I'll turn it over to uh, Gerhard So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will give you some short, uh, some some short informations on the radioelectrical situation in Japan. First of all, I hope you can read it. Uh, this is the gamma dose rates in the vicinity outside the 30 kilometer zone. Uh, since yesterday, it didn't change very much, and the levels stayed very much the same. Uh, I will show you some other, other <coughs> gamma dose rate readings in the next slide, and here indicated with the red arrows, there are the locations are indicated at which these measurements are done. And here comes the slide. And again, since last, since yesterday, nothing changed. We have since 16th of uh, 16th of March. Uh, Slightly, slight decrease. <coughs> Meanwhile, we got some, we got access to <coughs> the data measured by this, by the CDPDO, and we also found some measurements on iodine in other parts of Japan. Uh, <coughs> this is. Ah, yeah. This is at CDPDO, and it's the National Institute for Environmental Studies, and in Tokyo, and in Chiba. This is a concentration of iodine-131 in Tokyo for the time from 15 to 19 March 2011 in becquerels per cubic meter. You see it during the for iodine-131 and cesium-137. On 15th of March, we had a sharp increase of the iodine, nearly to 250 becquerel per cubic meter at this station. It dropped immediately, and then it remained. Then the levels are, are very low. Oh, the levels are low, or could not be no long, no longer be detected. The same is with cesium. However, the peak for cesium is much, much lower. And if you have in mind this peak, this coincides very well with this peak you see at the beginning. First the increase, and then a decrease, and obviously no further major deposition. OK. Uh, <coughs> at these stations, they, were also, uh, they made also measurements in air for on a radionuclide specific uh, basis. And they have detected a number of radionuclides of iodine 131, 132, 135, 33, 35, with half lives of two hours to eight days. From this iodine 132, 133 and 135, they are meanwhile, uh, 
they are decaying relatively fast with half-lives of 20 hours and 6 hours so they are already nearly gone we have still tellurium 132 as well as cesium and we have three cesiums from 34 with a half-life of, of 2 years cesium 136 with a half-life of 13 years and cesium 137 as you may know with a half-life of 30 years additionally tellurium 129 was found the spectrum of radionuclides found both at uh, at the Keck Institute at Nice and the CDPDO are in general agreement however some we have to analyze it a little bit because the ratios between some element, between some radiant lights are not the same and we have to look for the reasons for that meanwhile uh, also the contamination of food and water is a concern I can show you some results of measurements provided by to us by the Japanese Ministry of Health and Welfare these measurements were done in the city of Kawamata this is 46 kilometer to the Fukushima power plant <coughs> there were three measurements reported for milk iodine for iodine levels were found ranging from 900 to 1500 which is well above the Japanese level for restricting for restricting the consumption of milk which is 100 for infants and 300 for adults the measurement for cesium could be de detected only in one sample it was at 18 becquerel which is below the levels set by Japan for restricting milk it has to be emphasized that these are only three measurements and they are they cannot be considered as really re representing the whole city of Kamamata they give just a snapshot of <coughs> and further monitoring will probably go on <coughs> higher levels were, were reported for iodine and cesium in leafy vegetables in this case spring onions and spinach was investigated and for spring onions there were three measurements they range from 110 to six to more than 6,000 uh, becquerel per kilogram uh, for iodine at least for 6,000 is well above the Japanese level for restriction of consuming leafy vegetables which is at 2,000 becquerel per kilogram for cesium the levels in this case more as touch so they range from very low values to 480 and the level oh the level is 500 which would restrict which would cause restriction higher values have been measured in spinach ranging from 800 from 8400 to 1500 to 15000 well above this level of 2000 and for spinach it is a little bit less it's two, 230 to 520 They were also made some measurements in drinking water the places in this case were not reported to us uh, <coughs> it was monitored for iodine and, and cesium uh, only in three in three uh, of the 46 samples of water samples iodine could be detected the highest level was 77 becquerel per liter the other two levels were relatively low and the level of water for drinking water consumption is 300 and cesium was detected in, in two samples from 46 but with very low low levels around one becquerel per liter the Japanese level for restricting consumption of drinking water is 200 
Okay, uh, now I come to the end, but I would like to take the opportunity to 